If you don't know who God is, then that's where you end up. So it is essential that we know who God is. So we have to have knowledge. Knowledge is essential. And that we have to be in the process, we have to be in the habit of seeking knowledge. It is for Omar ibn al-Khattab. This, is, this hadith is found in Sahih Muslim. Authentic. Now, in another narration of Abdullah ibn Omar, he related that the Prophet had said, while I was sleeping, I saw a cup of milk offered to me in my dream. I drank from it until its freshness was reflected through my fingernails. Then I gave the remainder to Omar ibn al-Khattab. The people asked, O Messenger of Allah, how do you interpret that dream? And he said, referring to the milk which he gave to Omar, it refers to knowledge. Knowledge. This is what Omar, one of the things that Omar was noted for. Omar ibn al-Khattab was noted for his knowledge. He advised Prophet ﷺ in a number of different occasions. And though the Prophet ﷺ didn't take his advice, revelation came confirming the advice of Omar. For example, in the prisoners after the Battle of Badr, when the Prophet ﷺ asked his companions, what should we do with them? Omar said, kill them all. Let each person take a prisoner who is from his family, his relative, maybe his uncle, maybe his father, maybe his brother, and kill them. That was Omar's suggestion. To make clear our break with kufr, disbelief. Abu Bakr's suggestion was free them for ransom or whatever. And the Prophet ﷺ took Abu Bakr's suggestion. Abu Bakr said they are relatives. You know, perhaps if we treat them kindly, maybe they'll come up, come up over to Islam afterwards. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, being soft-hearted person that he was, made the ijtihad here and chose the suggestion of Abu Bakr. However, Allah revealed in the Quran that it was not befitting for the Prophet to take prisoners until he had established himself in the land. Because these people that they were fighting were people who killed Muslims in Mecca. The only thing that would bring them to their senses is like for like. This is war, this is battle. They're caught, execute them. They killed how many Muslims in Mecca before? That was the better choice. Also, Abdullah ibn Salam, a Jewish rabbi and scholar from the Qaynuqa uh, tribe who converted to Islam when the Prophet ﷺ first came to uh, Medina, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas related that he heard Allah's Messenger say, said that he didn't hear Allah's Messenger say about anyone alive and walking the earth, he will be in paradise except in the case of Abdullah ibn Salam. So this individual, he was noted for his knowledge again. He was knowledgeable as a Jew, as a rabbi, a scholar amongst them. And when the truth came, he accepted it. And increased in knowledge, he got the reward of having followed the religion that he was exposed to of Prophet Musa. And then doubled that reward by accepting Islam. So... The first principle is that of knowing Allah, knowing about Allah, believing in Him, testifying to that belief. That is the first step to paradise. Because in knowing Allah, we know what Allah is not. The confused ideas which are out there, like the belief that Allah is everywhere, this is one of the confused ideas that people have. You know, though it has become very widespread, it is a confused idea. It is not from the teachings of Islam. Not the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ or his companions. The correct belief is that Allah is beyond his creation. Because when a person says, okay, Allah is everywhere, Allah is in you, Allah is in me, you have problems. Because somebody is going to come along and say to you, yeah, Allah is in you and me, but Allah is more in me than he is in you. 
So what does that mean? That you should worship me. And you've got people who have made this claim throughout the ages. People inviting others to worship themselves. You have 8 million people in India believing that this guy by the name of Sai Baba, they believe that he is God walking the earth. 8 million people, including some of the people in the top echelons of the government, and even some Muslims. And also, issues of intermediation. You have people who are promoting the idea that we can pray to others besides Allah. We can pray to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Or we can pray to the saints and ask them to carry our prayers to Allah for us. You have people t teaching this. But this is the wrong belief about Allah. It's a belief of ignorance. Because if we can pray through individuals to others besides Allah, then what is the difference between us and the Catholics who have a saint for every occasion? You lose something, you pray to this saint. You want to get married, you pray to that saint. You want to you know, get a big house, you pray to this saint. You got a saint for everything. And unfortunately, there are amongst Muslims who have a similar thing going. They have these saints that they pray to. Saints who are human beings, who died on the earth, who are buried. The places of their burial have become shrines where people make pilgrimage to. Thousands and thousands of Muslims. This is all misguidance. So we need to believe in Allah and believe in Him as He deserves to be believed in. So first step is correct your world outlook. You need to have the right one. The second is to commit ourselves emotionally. If we have established this belief, we know what it is, we have knowledge of it, we know what's right about it, then we need to commit ourselves to it emotionally. What happens is that people usually have this backwards. People are committed to something emotionally without having knowledge about it. The average Christian, you know, Hindu and others, they are committed emotionally to their system. I was born or whatever, my parents or whatever, my grandparents or whatever, there's no way I'm going to be anything but that. That is that strong emotional commitment to the thing. But no knowledge. So where we commit ourselves emotionally to something without having knowledge first, we then get locked into misguidance. This is satanic. Traditionalism is a satanic force amongst us. Where people hold on to traditions. Traditions which don't have their origin in divine revelation. So they become sources of misguidance.